How you doing? This is uh, Coach C. Carla, and we're going to be speaking with Aviola Abrams, and she's going to be talking about her book, From Imagination to Reality. And this is really going to take us on a, a journey, the mystic Abdullah, Neville Goddard's teacher, but we're going to do more than that. We're going to really deep dive into manifestation and law of attraction, whatever you call it, law of assumption. We're going to discuss all those things, and we're going to let you know how these things apply to you. Abiola, welcome. Oh, thank you so much, Coach DeCarlo. I'm looking forward to this conversation. Likewise, likewise. Listen, I did uh, some uh, research, of course, and there's a wealth of information. Anybody that wants to find out about you, I mean, the only thing they have to do is put your name <laughs> out there on, on Google, for example, and all this information just populates and pops up. So how did this journey begin? So like all of us, there are many different beginnings, right? So it just depends on which, <laughs> which part of the beginning. And I could say, well, it began in a hospital in New York City <laughs> many years ago. <laughs> but the most recent part of this journey, my manifesting journey, if you will, um, begins actually in high school. I was fortunate enough that my father had gone to a conference and he would go to these conferences and bring home papers and paperwork and stuff like that and you know stuff for just and just to throw it there and leave it there and he had actually Zig Ziglar had spoken at this conference that he was at that he attended it was like I think in either the the maybe the 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 late 80s or early 90s I was a kid and he brought home this paperwork and something about like seeing these affirmations these positive statements the way that they were it did something to my brain like I hadn't witnessed that before I hadn't experienced that before you know I'm a girl from New York City <laughs> who heard things like you know well if it's not working out you got to put an H on your back and handle it like that was like straight up like how we rolled how we moved you know <laughs> at that time I'm from the lights you know stay out until the street lights come on generation drinking water from the hose key around my neck going to school generation <laughs> you know and so something about, you know, reading statements like every day and every way things are working out for me. Like, you know, wow, I am worthy and deserving of all great things. Wow. You know, these kinds of statements for me, like lit something up in my brain. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't aware that it would end up so many years later being this journey. But as a kid as an adolescent who was having, you know, troubles, you know, getting along with folks in school and all kinds of things like that. You know, being an adolescent is hard, yeah. <laughs> you know, most of us anyway. Um, and, you know, it, for me that that really lit, lit something up inside of me. And I think that because I had a lot of challenges with self-worth and self-love and self-esteem growing up, it always propelled me to look toward personal development works, things that could help me move out of that space and move into a more positive space. So that is, you know, if we, <laughs> you know, there are other beginnings uh, closer in the journey, but that that is a beginning beginning. <laughs> Thank you for that. Now, you know, it's funny because a lot of times in our journeys, we think that, you know, I was hearing some of my story in your story and what I realize is how universal the story is. And I think a lot of times people listen to other people's story and they think that, you know, that person's special, they're unique, and God won't use me and so forth. But God will use anyone that's open and willing. Is that what you find? Absolutely. Yeah. One billion percent. And you said it exactly the way that I always say it is that, you know, we look at folks, people may look at you and be like, OK, you know, Coach DiCarlo's on a show. He's got it all figured out. Easy yeah. for him, you know, or Abiola, easy for her. Yeah. But everybody, you know, I, I just right now just send love to everyone for your silent struggles that no one else is seeing. And God will absolutely use any and every one of us, Absolutely. any and every one of us, it's up to us to open our hearts, to open our spirit, yes. to say, I want more. I'm yes. ready for more. Like those words, like if right now, if you're watching this and all yes. you can muster up the, the, the confidence, the courage, the energy to say is I am ready, you Absolutely. will become used. You will be a vessel Absolutely. of who knows what, who knows Absolutely. what. Absolutely. You know, you said something that made me think what we don't realize is our struggle is often our greatest asset. Do you find that to be so? It it, it absolutely is. Uh, the things that we run from, our vulnerability, mm -hmm. our struggles, 
our challenges, you know, that is absolutely your superpower. Whatever absolutely. it is that you are running from, there is someone who can be empowered by your absolutely. story. There is absolutely. someone who, you know, we all have different callings. For some people, it may be a, a, a bigger platform like you have, but for some people, it may be in their, their church or on their block or in their family or, or whatever to empower the people around them. And so you don't have to, as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, you don't have to see the whole staircase. Absolutely. Just see the step in front of you. So if the step in front of you is, okay, I want to manifest X, Y, and Z. Allowing yourself to be in the energy mm -hmm. of, okay, I deserve that, Absolutely. rather than, you know, a lot of us, and particularly, you know, folks that look like you and I, Absolutely. are afraid to dream even big dreams, yeah. you know, and keep puny dreams, keep small dreams. And then, unfortunately, I want to say a lot of folks tend to then want to reach out and keep the people around them small. Absolutely. So if you have, if you're watching this, you have a vision, you have goals, you have dreams, you know, that is magnificent. Know that those are coming through you from the most high. Absolutely. And then don't try to convince other people to get on board with your Absolutely. vision. Yeah. It was given to you. It's yeah. your vision. They don't even believe in themselves. How are they going to believe in you? <laughs> you know, so, so, so move forward with your own vision, your manifestations, each and every one of us. And this really shifted things for me, Coach DiCarlo, realizing that our manifestations, each and every one of us, the things that we desire are part of evolutionary consciousness, are part of making this whole world greater. So it may seem like, well, but how can the things that I want and the things that I desire make the world greater? If we look around at the things around us, Everything around us started in someone's imagination. Absolutely. Everything around us started in someone's vision. And so, you know, every single part of us has a, every single one of us has a part to play. Absolutely. You know, and that's beautiful that it's been said, you know, we, uh, one of the master teachers says, listen, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. You know, like I said, your name speaks of wealth. I mean, <laughs> Abiolus means wealth, abundance, prosperity. You said something. I want to touch on it for the listener. Take the first step. It may be starting that channel. It may be writing that first paragraph for that book. And speaking of that book, let's talk about from <laughs> imagination to reality. How was this birth? So I am I'm so excited about mm -hmm. getting to talk about this book. Like you have no idea, like for me, like this has absolutely been a labor of love and to be able to talk to someone who gets it, who is like, okay, who is equally as excited about these mm. conversations. Oh my goodness. This, this is a manifestation right now. Like, like let's just acknowledge it. This for me, yeah. us having this conversation, you and I is a, is a manifestation. Wow. And so this book for me, um, it's very interesting, you know, God will find you no matter where you are. So once Absolutely. you have been and you've said those words, I am ready, you cannot hide. You can run. And many of us <laughs> try to try to sabotage ourselves, out, but you cannot hide. And so I was dealing with Coach DiCarlo, you know, um, a heartbreak, a breakup, you know, drama situation. And I went to go, you know, hide out at my parents' house um, for a while. I lived in Harlem, New York until very recently. And my parents uh, live in another part of New York. I'm a New Yorker, born and raised. And I came, to, I went to go hang out at my parents' house and I would come out on their porch and be journaling and, and stuff like that um, while dealing with, you know, mending my heart. And I would always say hello and be talking to, um, conversating, as we say over here, <laughs> conversating with, you know, my mom's mailman, Mr. Steve. Okay. And Steve, very interestingly enough, started to tell me about Neville Goddard. Wow. And he said... You got to, you, he said, you have a positive mind, a positive spirit. He said, you have to read about Neville Goddard. Mm -hmm. And I'd read, I'd already read some of like new thought wisdom from other teachers. Mm -hmm. um, Florence, Florence Govelshin, I was familiar with her work. And at that at that moment, I was having a know-it-all moment. We've all had know-it-all moments. <laughs> <laughs> Lose your know-it-all moments because of the moment that you're closed and you think you can know it all. Absolutely. You can keep so I was like, yeah, I, I know all about that. I know all about that stuff, Steve. I had even led, you know, a couple of, you know, circles and talk. I, I know, I know all of it. I don't need, I know, I know all of it. <laughs> and interestingly enough, at the same time I was listening to Dr. the late great Dr. Wayne Dyer at the same time, he had a show on Hay House Radio at the time it was called. And he used to come on at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in New York, where I live. And so I used to listen to his show. And then I heard Dr. Dyer say, 
you know, I just, he said he wrote his re most recent book at that time about um, the teachings from Wayne, from um, Neville Goddard named, um, you know, Wishes Fulfilled, okay. which is uh, from a, a Neville Goddard quote. And I said, oh, wow. Okay. All right. All right. You know, God is trying to tell me That's something. Cool. Okay. That's Let cool. me pay attention. Let me look into this. And so I started to look into Neville Goddard. And it was very interesting because I learned that he had, that he was from Barbados mm -hmm. in the West Indies. And initially, I got to share with you, you know, straight up, you know, and I have everybody in my friend group, you know, friends of all backgrounds. But initially, that turned me off because I figured, okay, he is, you know, a European person from Barbados and a European person from, you know, where my family is from may have had a role in colonizing or enslaving, not them directly, but their families with my family. Yeah. And so initially I was like, oh, this kind of like turned me off a little bit. But luckily I pressed forward and kept on reading. And my, 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 my soul lit up from his teaching. Yeah. And then, of course, when I learned about Abdullah, mm -hmm. the person who was his mentor, he was Abdullah's apprentice. That, of course, opened my whole soul up and my whole energy up. And I knew that at that time, like most of us, you know, most of y'all listening, whatever background you're from, I know that once we hear Abdullah's energy is so powerful, once any of us hears anything about him, we become like Abdullahites. We want to know more. We go <laughs> on search. We want to know more. And I knew at that time that I was going to write a book about, you know, as a writer that I, I needed to write a book about Abdullah. But it wasn't until... To be honest with you, it wasn't until maybe about a year and a half ago or so that it became urgent okay. in my spirit that the time is now, that you got to get this out right now. It became very urgent in my spirit as if, you know, Abdullah was speaking to me himself and saying, okay, come on, baby girl, we're going to write this. We got to get it out there, you know, because as we know, he didn't leave much of a paper trail. Absolutely. And I felt like I was being called by this great ancestor to put these words together mm -hmm. and put it there for future generations. You know, that African, African cultures by and large are oral tradition, oral history culture, where history was passed down through what I call oral literature. And we are now in a different era, you know, that worked for that era, and it's still a beautiful art and a beautiful thing. In this era, the information plus age, things need to be recorded in a different way. And so I very much see that, okay, I, I was for him, you know, the scribe to help just to take those teachings, a griot, as is in our tradition, the storyteller, to take those teachings and put them forward for the next age so that when other folks come and have that call like, Abdullah, who's this? I want to know more. There it is. Boom. Here it is. His knowledge is all there. You said something, and I'm curious. I've done research trying to find yeah. what I could. How were you able to compile this book with such limited, was it the spirit of Abdullah speaking through you? How did that manifest as far as the book itself coming into fruition? So it was a number of different kinds of research. There was spiritual research. Okay. There was the research of, um, as you said, Abdullah de definitely speaking directly through mm -hmm. me. And then there was good old-fashioned academic research. Okay. The book that I wrote that's one book right before this is named African Goddess Initiation. Okay. And in that book, I did research into all of, you know, a, a large part of the, um, throughout the 52 plus countries of Africa, the divine feminine religions and spiritual traditions. Mm -hmm. And so... In many ways, that prepared me for this journey, that it's something that for me, I'm, I'm a geek, I'm an academic, you know, it's something that it prepared me, I feel like everything that I've done, you know, my schooling, everything prepared me for this journey. And so I not only did, you know, the, the surface level research, but I went in and took the teachings of Abdullah's disciples and the disciples gotcha. of his disciples gotcha. so for example you know reverend ike um, who used to have a church in harlem um I, before before i was born he had 
a he was a disciple of Neville Goddard, who was a disciple of Abdullah, and his teachings were directly derived from Abdullah. And so taking those teachings, just like if you take any great spiritual teacher, the greatest of the great, it's passed down through their disciples. Jesus didn't write a book, (laughs) right? But his disciples wrote a book. His disciples wrote their books, which were combined and compiled into the New Testament. So it's the same sort of thing uh, that, you know, taking the teachings of that his disciples and the disciples of his disciples learned from him. And a very interesting thing is that because for me, you know, um, I didn't know that day when I was listening to Neville Goddard and listening to my mom's mailman talk about Neville Goddard that I would be at Hay House at the same publisher, you know, then putting out this teaching. But the lineage then becomes, you know, Wayne Dyer was a student of Neville Goddard. Neville Goddard was a student of Abdullah. Louise Hay, who started Hay House, you know, she also is a part of that lineage. And so it is, it's it's a beautiful and wonderful thing just to to watch, you know, the, the hand of the divine at play. You know, and it's amazing when you speak even of Hay House, how many of the teachers like Joe Vitale and so forth have been yeah. influenced, Jack Canfield, I can go on and listen to different people, yes. have been influenced by Neville Goddard. Neville has given birth to so many students. Many of the students don't even know that their origin is Neville, let alone Abdullah. Yes. You know, a lot of people <laughs> stop at Neville because, of course, they think that, you know, Neville came up with all the information that he came. But Neville, like us, was an avid student. Yes. So he was continuously learning. He talked about his library and having to get rid of books and things like that. So he took the foundation, uh, Neville took the foundation of Abdullah, and he built upon it. And yeah. likewise with us, so I love that you compiled and did your research and pulled from all these great teachers to compile this book. What is it that the student that's looking to grow What will they take from this book? So an interesting thing is that when I started to do the research of Abdullah and, you know, his knowledge, I went back and did research into, you know, the foundational um, Ethiopian spiritualities Mm -hmm. and, you know, saw that, you know, even before the Abrahamic religions came and combined with the knowledge of the indigenous um, Ethiopian philosophies, that this is ancient African philosophy and ancient spiritual thought available for everyone and of use to everyone. And so what I want people to take away from this is that they are worthy and deserving of creating and manifesting their dreams, that they are worthy and deserving Mm -hmm. of having a vision for themselves and their lives, and don't limit your idea of what is for you. The most limiting words that we can say are, you know, which I think I actually said in this conversation, but people like us or people like us, you know, if you're saying that in a positive way, like we did here, that's, but if you're saying it in a way like, you know, like I heard a lot growing up, oh, people like us don't do that. People like us don't go there. People like us don't eat that. People like us can't do people, you know, that kind of thing. It restricts you. It keeps you small. It doesn't allow room for you to grow. And we live at the most beautiful, even with all the the things wrong in the world, we live the most beautiful and spectacular moment where we have the world at our fingertips. And the last thing we want to do is make it smaller by, you know, constricting it, constricting our vision and our view of it. Yeah. Very exciting times we live in. I agree. I agree. And even as I know that they're, when they delve into your words, the book, and so forth, more than people like us or them or they or whatever, God in us. You know, yes. and yes. as a people, that was something that was ingrained. And, of course, you know, then a lot of it was removed by religion. God ceased to be within us, and he was out there somewhere. And yes. Even like I stated earlier, your name being wealth and abundance and prosperity, many of us believe that we're going to get ours on the hereafter. But the master teacher, Jesus, said, listen, I've come that you might have life more abundantly, not in the hereafter, but here and now. And God says, my plans for you is to prosper you, to give you a hope 
in the future. Let's talk about that because money seems yeah. to be very taboo in the Neville Goddard community. You know, if you yes. talk about coaching or charging for services, yes. but even in the minority community and so forth, we've been so indoctrinated that money's bad, money's evil. How do we help people realize that they are their abundance? Oh, I love this conversation, Coach mm. Carla. We can talk about this. <laughs> this is one of my favorite things to talk about. And in fact, in the book, I have a whole section that's devoted to the teachings uh, that came through Reverend Ike, um, who I had only heard negative things about. Me right? too. Because, you know, yeah, I'd heard, you know, he's a prosperity preacher and he's, you know, out for self and he was all of this and that like very negative things. But, you know, again, like, I'm a geek. I'm a researcher. I'm an academic at heart. And so I went to my community. I lived in Harlem. Yeah. Harlem is a lot of old folks who were there. You know, somebody's got to was had to attend church with the Reverend Ike. So I started to speak to my neighbors and find out, like, did they hate him? Was he trying to really take from the community? Like people say, and my neighbors, you know, were overwhelmingly positive about Reverend Ike. And they said, no, you know, it's not like that at all. Don't believe what they're telling you. They said, they, one of my neighbors, he directly said, Mr. Otis, he said, um, he said, it wasn't like that at all. They said people were just mad because he was putting us on and telling us how to get ours. That's what Mr. Otis said. And Reverend, Reverend Ike, one of the chants that he had in his church was, you know, the words that you just said, which was, thank you, God, in me. He would have them chant that. Thank you, God, in me. And, you know, for folks who are listening to this, I want you to get something that's very, very, um, very, very, get something very clear. The idea of you will look for your joy in the life hereafter and not here in the present was something that was specifically created, not by accident, but by men who sat in a room and thought of ways to be able to use that beautiful Bible to hold you back Absolutely. and said, okay, this is great. This is what we can tell them in order to make them not want more now that they will get theirs, but just not right now. And so when we see ourselves as the reflection of the divine and the most high, which we are, that is a reflection of prosperity, of abundance, of wealth. And it should feel good when you invest in yourself through someone else. Money is not meant to be hoarded. It is meant to be exchanged, Absolutely. to be shared. If you look at a field of flowers, it is abundant. It is rich. It is prosperous. The Bible doesn't say money is root of all evil. It says the love of money, meaning that when you leave behind the love of us as human beings, is the root of all evil. And in fact, you know, most folks know that Jesus was prosperous, you know, and that spiritual teachers, you know, my great grandmother, for example, was in Guyana. South America, where the majority of my family is from, um, it has deep roots from um, for the, like, the past 300 years or so. Um, she was a, a midwife and a women's fertility healer. They didn't use that language, women's fertility healer, but that's what she did. She helped women with, you know, their fertility challenges. And her, she was called Ma. And Ma was paid in chickens and goats and, you know, that sort of thing. And the community would, you know, when she did something, that's how they paid her in eggs and whatever it is. And I remember I was talking to a group of Guyanese people from my culture about this concept of money and spirituality, which they were not open to at all. And I said to them, I said, chickens, eggs, goats was the currency of her day. Absolutely. So Absolutely. it wasn't that she was, that, that money is bad and she was not taking money. That was money. Absolutely. There is no difference between that and somebody exchanging a credit card, Absolutely. you know, whether if they're on the banks of Senegal, if they were exchanging, you know, a, a cake or whatever it is, it's the currency. And as we see currency shifts from, you know, cowrie shells to Bitcoin to whatever it is. And if you tell yourself that it's not creative to make money or it's not spiritual to make money or it's not, you know, whatever it is. You are holding yourself outside of the current of abundance that really is your birthright, Absolutely. really is your birthright. And if we think about, you know, I have a daughter who is two years old. I want my daughter to prosper beyond belief. If we think about with our earthly children, how we want them to thrive, do you really feel like your heavenly parents, your heavenly Absolutely. family want Absolutely. you to, to struggle? No, no. The same way that I want everything for my daughter, everything is wanted for each and every one of us. Absolutely. You know, you said something about money and 
I think a lot of us miss this, that money is symbolic. So whether we're talking about rice, a rock, a diamond, gold, yes. coins, yes. It's symbolic of an agreement between two spirits, two or more spirits. So I say my spirit in me says to your spirit that we will do this exchange. And we call the currency money, whatever. But really, it's an exchange of spirits. You understand? My energy is exchanging for your energy something that I find of value. And you provide whatever that thing is. If you understand that money, they call it currency. Currency. That's what I say. You got to plug in currency, yes. the current energy. Absolutely. It's energy. And so, but again, it goes back to that meeting, several meetings that people have had to make sure to keep the masses in the dark. Yes. If I can make money evil, if I can make money something you're going to get on the hereafter, then what that means is for those few, it simply means more money, more control for them. And so it's wonderful. Now, I was reading through some of the information, and you said something that, what is that tidbit, that insight that you glean from the teachings of Abdullah that is going to surprise the reader? Well, very interestingly enough, there is a section that I have that is specifically about money. Um, <laughs> there is a section that's specifically around that, the mystery of identical harvest. The book is broken up into mysteries, um, scrolls. Mm -hmm. Let me see, what was surprise? I, there's so much that would surprise folks. Um, I think that one of the things that would surprise people is when Abdullah talks about, you know, quibbles. Um, meaning, you know, well, don't eat this, don't, you know, those of us who have, you know, kind of restrictive ways of approaching life. And, you know, that for me was very interesting um, because, you know, I am a, like, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I'm a celibate, I'm, you know, all of those things. And very interestingly enough, like, Abdullah lived most of his life um, in that orthodox way. But, uh, you know, toward the end of his life, you know, in like the last 20 years or so, and he lived to be 100 plus, you know, the last 20 years or so, he realized that that was not what the calling was, you know, that, you know, holding ourselves back in that way. At that time, he talked about, you know, in order to be holy. And it's very interesting, because like, now we do a lot of that in order to be healthy, and holy, healthy is the new holy, you know, was, was a way out of not experiencing the fullness of life. He explained it, not experiencing the fullness of life. And he taught Neville that, you know, when Neville was going to have a dinner with these people who were putting out this like abundant feast, that him not receiving the fullness of what they were giving him would not even though it was food specifically, then how would he expect them to receive the fullness of his message? And I thought that that was really a powerful and interesting, uh, interesting thing. And I'll share with you a story when I was recording the audiobook for this um, this book, and I was in the studio in Brooklyn, New York. And my audiobook engineer afterward, he said, because I've never had, I've never even had coffee. I've never had coffee before. <laughs> never had coffee, never had pork. Um, and he said to me, he said, so you want to try some coffee now? And I was like, whoa, hey, I got it. It's like, you know, like <laughs> he was like, okay, maybe next time. You know, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm like, I need a slow, slow bird. But it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting thought and an interesting concept. Yeah. You know, in that, um, you know, experiencing the fullness that life has to offer. You know, we get this, this one chance in our most beautiful and precious lives to be ourselves. You know, yes, you come back as someone else. But right now is your one wild and precious life as you, you know, experiencing the fullness of it. I thought I love that teaching. You know, and you say we get this one chance. And if we really, truly understand it's God experiencing yeah. life through us, yes. whatever you call that entity, God. But God, when you limit and put all these limitations, and I went through my own period, especially um, years ago, I had cut out this, I had cut out that, and it wasn't as severe as Neville's, but right. I found myself being really legalistic in my lifestyle, and I was doing all these rituals that yeah. really wasn't bringing forth life. And different people have different 
dietary concerns. So my goal is not to tell anyone, but for me, I had to be mindful. And it made me think about the uh, story of uh, Neville. Abdullah told him that when he came back from Barbados, yes. he would have died. Yes. And that was like, what do you mean I'm going to die? That literal it, it, death, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's figuratively, not literally. And so Neville said when he, as long as he was in on the island, he yes. was, you know, eating like he normally would and, uh, you know, making a, as it were, a headache for his family because, of course, yeah. they were in the <laughs> grocery business. But when he got on ship and he was headed back, everything broke, everything changed. And he said, I had no clue what happened. Yes. He says, but my diet and everything else had changed. And Abdullah was correct. And I can in part tell you what happened. Abdullah saw a different Neville. Yes. And he believed it so that when Neville made the journey back, I only mentioned that we have the power to influence others, yes, to yeah, encourage absolutely you know, to speak life or death. Abdullah spoke life to Neville, just uh -huh. like when Neville had no clue why he wanted to go to Barbados. Yes. It was because his parents saw for him wanting to come home and visit because they had just had an exchange. They had just gotten on the boat and he said he didn't have any desire, but all of a sudden, my whole point is I tell people, you have to be mindful of what you're thinking or speaking into the lives of others, because yeah. even your words, especially for somebody that's not firm on their journey and their decision making, they can be influenced. And we have a whole nation of people that are being influenced by the media, you know, and the yeah. media pays billions, if not trillions of dollars to make sure that they can influence. So let's talk about the power of influence. You know, and speaking of Abdullah and Neville and so forth, but even in your mm -hmm. own life, how has that played a part? So this is really important, you know, when we talk about, you know, the media and the messages of the media. And, you know, I always share with people that I talk to that if it is challenging for you, for example, to make a shift in and in, in do, you know, in your vision for life and then the words that you speak over your life and all of those things, it's not your fault. You know, all of us are inundated every single Absolutely. day from the time that we're born Absolutely. with so many messages about who we should be, Absolutely. about, you know, what we are capable of, about, you know, for women, what we should look like and for men, you know, yeah. and, and who we are. And we're inundated with those voices, yeah. you know, those external voices. And so we have to be very, very dil diligent, meticulous. Absolutely. Yes. about the words that we speak, how, how we speak life into ourselves, as you That's said, true. and those around us. And, you know, in the beginning, when you're doing this work, you may find that you need to really just cut off some people because mm -hmm. when we, with, with some things that we vision, we visual, we have a vision for, even when you've been doing this for a long time, even for mm -hmm. you and I, there's some things we have a vision of that we cannot speak about to the people around our lot in our right. lives if we're not strong enough in it ourselves right. because the moment that someone says eh, well yeah well you know you really think it's possible just be happy with your little whatever or exactly. you know we die to use you know abdullah's words we die to ourselves a little bit in that moment that we have to shrink or yeah. play small or hold back on our vision and hold back on who we are and so it is very, very important in terms of influence. I, everyone who is watching this, very much it's, it's important that you join a community like the community that you have or come and hang out with me, you know, and, and my podcast and community and all of that. Be around like-minded people because influence is incredibly important yeah. and what we are manifesting for all those folks who are watching and saying ah but i've done it i've, I've read all the books and i've chanted affirmation i made a couple of vision boards it didn't work mm -hmm. whatever it is what you're manifesting is not what you consciously are putting out there or pretending that you think mm -hmm. what you're manifesting is what you think subconsciously on your in your subconscious mind the stories that you're telling yourself about you the stuff that you're you know that you are maybe even that you're you're even afraid to say out loud right. that's what you're manifesting right. your beliefs what do you really really believe and so for that reason being having discernment around about your influences 
the, the, the media that you take in, the things that you take in. And again, it's different for everyone. I had the experience you did with food um, where, for example, where, you know, I was a raw vegan for a bit, but that was very unhealthy for me. You know, that was very unhealthy for me. I thought that it was something because I saw it in the media and thought that it would be healthy for me. It wasn't healthy for me. But having being aware of the influences, the things that we allow into our lives, very, very important. Very important. You know, um, monitor your the words that you speak. Um, but the words that you speak, half the time, we're not even aware of the right. words that we speak. You know, I had a conversation with my mom. I remember years ago, she used to say all the time with my aunts, and they'd be on the phone and be like, yeah, poor people like us, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And then I said, mommy, you always, why do you always say? And she said, she said, I didn't say that. She wasn't even aware of it. Yeah. You know, most of us are not even aware of some of the things that we say because we get into a habit of saying yeah. them. So if you get with your friends and they're all like, oh, all the good men are taking men and dogs, men, all men cheat, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And then you're like, oh, man, like, why can't I, you know, find any, you know, Absolutely. positive men? Yeah. You have created a world, your worldview and world vision yeah. is that of, you know, horrible, cheating, dog down men, men who, that you've created that, Absolutely. you know, and so being ha being aware of what you are influences you're allowing in your life are, is is important for every single one of us not just children but very much us as adults absolutely. as well absolutely you know you said something and it made me think about a conversation and several came to mind but years ago i was having a conversation with my sister and she says you know you know that diabetes runs in our family i said not in my family mm -hmm. i said in your family maybe I said, but in my household, that's not the case. I said, in part, you're thinking, doing, and practicing the habits of people that deal with diabetes. I said, that's not my lifestyle. Yes. And so, but it would have been easy to say, oh, yeah, you're right. I forgot about that. You know, yes. so, you know, and as I've gotten older, you know, I do physicals and checkups, you know, no diabetes, no high blood pressure, no medication, no glasses, you know, yes. but that was what I believed about my reality. And yes. so I live from that reality. Let's talk about people, you know, we talk about imagination becomes reality. And like you stated earlier, everything around us started off as someone's ideal. Yes. What tools will they take away from reading this book and understanding the link between thinking and manifestation? Yes. So when we talk about manifesting from our imagination, it may seem like it's a new concept at first, but again, I want to remind you, you're already doing it. Absolutely. You're already doing it. So for example, if you are a worrier, not a worry, not a worrier, but a worrier, <laughs> you know, I come from a family of worriers, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you are using your imagination to create things you don't Absolutely. want by worrying about all of the things that can go wrong. Yeah. And so one of the very simple shifts that we can make is for each and every one of us who are watching this, in the moments before we go to sleep, instead of thinking of all the things that went wrong during the day, all the, you know, all the folks you wish you would have said this and you would have yeah. cussed out that one and whatever, <laughs> use that time instead to, to have a vision of, you know, use your imagination to think about how things you want things to be. Instead of thinking about the life that you don't want, think about the life that you do want mm -hmm. as if it already is. Absolutely. Okay. So that is one of the most powerful shifts that we can make. And it's such, it sounds so simple, you know, simple doesn't mean easy, but it is That's a very true. simple shift. You know, if, if you've got to maybe write it down or set an alarm mm -hmm. or something to remind yourself, like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And maybe write it down in a journal, and, you know, the next morning, keep a journal so that you can, you know, or, or even just check it off. Okay, last night I did it. Like, that is a very simple shift that you can make. Using your imagination instead of using it to terrorize yourself, like Absolutely. a lot of us do, you know, use it to lift yourself up and lift your life up. And that's really what a vision board is. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's, it's your imagination manifest on, a, you know, pieces of paper that you put on a, you know, on a board. But here is the shift. And here's why a lot of people, you know, the vision boards don't work. They have not ignited it with the energy, which is the feeling state. Absolutely. How do you 
feel about the things that you want to manifest? How do you feel about what you want to create? See it from the end, live it from the end. So if you are wanting to manifest, um, say, having a show like Coach DiCarlo, you know, it's not enough to just say, all right, well, I stuck it on my vision board, never thought yeah. about it, never did anything, never looked into it, you know, ever again. Yeah. How do you feel about that? How does it make you feel? You know, what is your vision for it? What, and then let that vision then inspire you to take step by step by step by step, you know, inspired action toward it. So yeah. think about the feeling, adding the feeling to your imagination. You know, it's kind of like the secret sauce that, you know, helps the imagination, you know, really pop into life. You know, you said something. I want to touch on it. You know, you said uh, you get this image and you said take inspired action in the community they want to imagine and they believe that you know neville said don't do anything but neville if you listen to enough neville talks the assumption was that you were going to take inspired action yes and neville even speaks directly about action he does he yeah. does now why that goes over some people's heads or one ear and out the other ear i don't know but like i said many people in the community they stuck as it were, at thinking, imagining, but not being, doing, and having. Yes. When you're dealing with a client, how do you help them make the transition from imagining to doing, being, and having? Yes. So this is so important to me that this is actually the focus of a retreat that I'm doing next year because I want folks to know that, you know, the the being, doing and havingness of it is why we are here in this earth school. So we could, if you're if you're wanting to, you know, be a swami and, you know, a spiritual person that's going to go to the top of a mountain and, and live there and, and live out everything in your imagination yeah. and not take, you know, the action toward it, you know, have at it. But for yeah. most of us, we want the visceral experience of Absolutely. living our lives. Yeah. And so action is not a bad thing. Correct. Action is not a negative thing. When we're talking about inspired action, it's not, we're not talking about hustle. Absolutely. We're not talking about work until you're dead. We're not talking about um, doing things that feel out of alignment or out of concert with your nervous system. We're not talking about that. Inspired action means action that ignites you, that is inspired in spirit, that is spirit saying Absolutely. to you, do this, take that call, you know, reach out and, and contact that person and see what they think of this. Absolutely. You know, you know, that that is the inspired action. That is what propels us forward. That is what creates our world the way that we want it to be. The beingness, the doingness, the havingness. And so realizing that it's not a negative thing. Mm -hmm is a big shift. And I know that this is incredibly controversial in the mm -hmm. manifesting community to talk about. So I'm glad that you brought it mm -hmm. up, you know, thinking about, you know, think about, okay, you know, say that you're wanting to call forward um, a car. Yes, a car, a person, you could, you could think about it and maybe someone will yeah. pull up in front of your house. And, you know, the other day I was asking my daughter again, she's two, I said, what kind of car, you know, should we get? And she's like, a purple car. And I'm like, okay. She's like, well, I mean, let's look for a purple car. I'm like, okay. You know, and I'm, I, you know, forgot all about it and, and moved on. And my block where I live right now, you the only reason to come down this block is if you live on this block. Gotcha. The next day we went outside and there was a purple car parked <laughs> in front of my house. And she said, mommy, purple car. And I thought first she was talking about the thing the day before. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, no, purple car. And I'm like, there's a purple car there. You know, like she <laughs> manifested a purple car. <laughs> They're like near instantly, you know, well, she's two years old. She's closer to source. She has less limitations on her mind Absolutely. about what is possible Absolutely. and about, you know, about creating life the way that she she wants it to be. There's less of a a, a bridge for her between sure. imagination her and reality. Her whole everything is in imagination. Yeah. Imagining is not a bad thing. A lot of us we've been taught also that imagining is just for I children. Agree. Exactly. You know, it's, you know, well, it's time to put away childish things and yeah. time to be an adult and, you know, be daydreaming, you know, stop daydreaming. <laughs> no, start daydreaming. Yeah. 
Yeah. Start daydreaming. Start daydreaming about what is possible. And then the action, the little action steps are the juicy part. It's where you see, you know, the hand of God in your life. Like sometimes, you know, I know that you do the same. Like where you look around, you're like, oh, my gosh, things, things happen. A person calls you or shows up. And you're like, God is showing off. God, you just show, you just show it off. Okay, all right. <laughs> and God, meaning you know, whatever name you designate, the divine Absolutely. is not as picky as we are as human Absolutely. beings about what that name should be. So God, the divine, the Most High, the universe, you know, whatever name, Ola Dumare, you know, Krishna, whatever, the name of the highest source energy that there Absolutely. is. Absolutely, uh, I'm even glad that uh, we're talking about that and. I come from a Christian background. And so when I first heard the teachings of Neville, I had to step back because it was contrary to everything that I had been taught up until that moment. Yes. Now, of course, like you, I love New Thought teachers. I, you know, So I've listened to them even before Neville, but he said something that just kind of, like I said, it just, I'm like, wow, you know, and I think the essence of what he was saying at that moment was, you're gods. And I came from a dogmatic Christian background, uh, almost occultish. Mm -hmm. And from that, you know, anything that seemingly said that you're God, it was scoffed on, you know, it was looked down on. Funny thing is, the thing that you said did not attract you was the thing that attracted me to Neville because Initially, when I saw him, you know, with his complexion and so forth, I said, you know, because most of the New Thought teachers that I was seeing at that time didn't look like me. Neville came from a European background, but because he was raised in Barbados, there was a yeah. ethnicity about him, you yeah, know, that yeah. kind of showed up in his accent and so forth. And so that was the thing that attracted me. But like I said, you know, the dogmas and everything that I had been taught, you know, God looks like this, God looks like, you know, and, you know, even today I hear people and I understand because I was them. Mm -hmm. But yes. master teacher says God is spirit. Yes. And those who yes. worship God, not even male, female, spirit. Yes. Now we yes. use these vernaculars to help us better grasp who God is. But in essence, God is energy and that energy is in us, yes. making us also divine yes you know and yeah. we to even say that you know and so reverend ike was way ahead of his time yes you know neville goddard abdullah these men and there's plenty of females you know i could talk about mm -hmm. florence and so forth you know yeah. were way ahead of their time and understanding that we're spiritual beings having this human experience yes. but the human experience isn't ultimately who we are. We can put on a new state immediately <laughs> yes. and become somebody else. Now, many of us believe this is just who I am. That's the deception. That's the deception. That's the illusion. Let's, let's talk about it. Yes. So I want to just go back and talk about a couple of things that you said. So yes, you know, like you said, the master teacher said, you know, if you if you look in the good book, you know, it says, you know, all of these things that I have done and more mm -hmm. you can do too. Have I not told you, is it not written in your word that ye are gods? You know, this is all in there. Yeah. It's all in there. It's just what we have been directed to. And one of the things that excited me also about mm -hmm. Abdullah was Neville saying that even though Abdullah was a rabbi, he learned more about Christianity from Abdullah yeah. than, you know, True. anyone that Abdullah was a teacher also of Christianity. Absolutely. You know, he was a teacher of religion as well. And so I love that about him. Um, and the and as you said, you know, the essence of the teachings is that, you know, we are you are God. We are spirit. We are okay. energy. Um and I, I actually had the, 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 the blessing and the fortune of having had my father who was, he is a minister. Um, I say was because he had a church, but he doesn't have a church at this yeah. time. Um, but he used to have a church in Brooklyn um, and his 
religion, it's in Guyana, it's not here in the United States, um, it's called Spiritual Baptist, mm-hmm. and it is a Christian-based religion um, combined with indigenous African teachings. And I remember being a kid and him saying, God is not outside of you, God is here within you. And that was also very, very shifting for me in how I looked at the world. And I say definitely that was a an advantage to have that shift, mm-hmm. you know, at, at an early age and, and, and have that idea, that concept. I had talked to someone else, another guest sometime back, and he was saying the same thing that you just stated. I didn't have the good fortune. I was raised pretty much in a religious background. So even when the name Reverend Ike came up, for example, you know, it was as a criticism. It wasn't as a positive thing. But having a parent to tell the child, even if the child doesn't understand it, I'm seeing the importance for a parent saying God is within you. And understanding that, because in understanding that, like I said, even at the moment, we may not fully understand as children, when we grow up, we're not bound as much by what we call traditional religion and so forth. Because the goal of most religion really is not liberation, but bondage, you know. And so it's not to enlighten you. Matter of fact, it's to keep you under the thumb of that particular religious organization. Yes. And like I state often in my group, my goal is not to tell you what to think, right. but to tell you that you are thinking. And depending upon what it is that you're thinking is going to determine what's showing up in your world. There's so much. I, I, I got <laughs> I'm a board full of stuff that I want. <laughs> we haven't even touched on. But as we're winding down, let's talk about what are those common things that keep the everyday person from manifesting the life that they desire? Yes. So every single one of us has blocks. Yeah. As you know, we have beliefs, limiting beliefs, blocked beliefs in certain areas. I do, you do, Sorry. every single one of us do because we have our lived experience. And then we have stuff that we've inherited that is not even our own issues and our yeah. own stuff, you know, stories that we've been told about who we are and our place in the world, stories that society has told us about who we are and our place in the world. And so for some of us, you know, maybe love is very easy to manifest for someone, but um, money is harder or by Vice versa, you know, we all have different blocks and different challenges. So, you know, for each of us, you know, dissolving those blocks, and you can go about it a number of different ways by either working specifically with dissolving those blocks, or if you have a stronger energy and you can just work in the vision and stay in the vision Mm -hmm. by itself, you know, that is the fastest way. But again, we're human beings, Correct. you know, and so, you know, most of us cannot necessarily hold. I'm not going to say most of us I'm not going to put that on you watching this. Thank you. <laughs> Let me correct and clear my, clear my stuff up. You know, some of us cannot necessarily just take something and hold the vision because we're also holding 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years mm-hmm. and beyond of programming and conditioning up until that point. So being able to do things that shift you out of the, you know, kind of knocking the legs off of your limiting beliefs, you know, that's why you want to work with, you know, a coach or a spiritual teacher or a practitioner, you know, to do this. You know, people will say, oh, well, you know, it seems now like, why are there so many coaches? I feel like that's because this is how many are needed. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why there are so many coaches, you know, because we're 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 all in a a state of rapid evolution. And, you know, coaches have coaches, you know, teachers have teachers, spiritual teachers have teachers. None of us knows every single thing. And so, you know, allowing yourself to move forward in this knowledge and not be limited by ideas like, oh, well, you know, I I, I see people, you know, sometimes on on forums saying things like, oh, well, I'm not going to pay for any books or courses or whatever. Well, if that's the energy and the vibration that you're putting forward in the world, the life that you're creating is one of scarcity, lack, and, sure. and, and fear. That's your vision. If your vision is one of prosperity and abundance in prosperity of love, yeah. prosperity of health and well-being, prosperity of money, you know, prosperity of yeah. friendship, you know, that's a different way that you approach the world, yeah. you know? So think about 
all of the things that you are doing in how you are creating your life and how you're moving forward. Every single thing that you're doing, how we do anything is how we do everything. And so if you are moving in the vibration and the frequency of lack, of scarcity, of not a good enoughness, not unworthiness, if that is your energy, you're going to create more of that. That's where, you know, so so you want to be very, very clear about recalibrating yourself, shifting, reprogramming yourself. You want to program yourself, you know, to, to succeed, to win, yeah. however, whatever that means for you. And so one of the tools I have a lot of, um, it was very important for me to put a lot of processes and tools yeah. in this book yeah. because we do need it. You know, and so the book was originally, it was funny because my, my publisher was not happy about that part because the book was originally supposed to be a hardcover, but then I insisted on keeping all of those exercises and everything in. And so they, we wanted it to be affordable. So we had to move to it being a paperback because I was like, no, they need the processes. The processes are not just some extra fluff. We need these processes in order to help us to shift. So one of the things that I have in the book are decrees and those are extended affirmations that you could read, you know, on a daily basis to be begin to reprogram yourself. Certainly. You know, we need to be able to reprogram, rewrite the programming yeah. that we have inherited, that we have created for ourselves and rewrite the story so that we get to live our lives more fully, more juicy, more, you know, and, mm -hmm. and be who we were born to become who we were born to be. You know, you said quite a bit in that those statements. <laughs> and the biggest thing that I want people to understand is that if you want to expedite your experience, your learning, your knowledge, then it behooves you to partner with somebody who's already gone ahead of you because now you're not spending, listen, I've spent 15, 20 years learning the stuff that I know. You in a couple of hours time speaking to the audience can glean from that 20 years of experience, or you can go through 20, 30 years or a lifetime trying to figure it out on your own. So the benefit of a spiritual teacher, you know, a counselor, a coach, whatever that expertise is, is shortcutting, as it were, your learning curve. You know, so now my question is, how do they reach you? How do they get a hold of you? Yes. So thank, first of all, thank you so much for this conversation. This first of many, I know this is just Absolutely. the first of many. Um, thank you for this, this conversation. And again, for creating a safe space for us to have these conversations about these ideas and for people to realize that, you know, right. You don't have to stay stuck. You don't have to stay in a life that you don't Absolutely. enjoy. You know, it's, it, if you think that, you know, if they think it's too expensive for coaching, all right, well, it's a lot more expensive to stay stuck for the exactly. next 10 years, trying to piece it together yourself, yeah. you know, so thank you for creating this Absolutely. conversation in this sacred space. So they can find from imagination to reality, a secret manifestation lessons in the law of assumption from Abdullah Master Alchemist on Amazon, on um, Barnes and Noble, wherever you buy books. And I want to ask, I want to make a special ask that please leave, oh, leave reviews. Reviews are very helpful. Leave reviews for Coach DiCarlo. Leave reviews for my work. It tells the algorithms that this is something that you're interested in. I know there are a lot of lurkers and content people who watch this who will never comment put a comment, you know, put something because it, again, trains the algorithm to know that this is worthy content and it helps other people to be able to see it. Um, my website is womanifesting.com. So like manifesting.com, but womanifesting.com. Um, and my social media, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Abiola TV like TV, like transformation and victory. And then I have a YouTube channel as well. I'm on YouTube at Planet Abiola. And that YouTube channel is also podcasted at the Goddess Temple podcast. So I look forward to folks hanging out with me. Oh, and I have a free gift for your audience. Mm -hmm. I have a bunch of freebies. Mm -hmm. So if you go to womanifesting.com, I have a free Goddess of Receiving workbook but I also have a free gift that is specific to From Imagination to Reality. So if you, when you purchase the book, absolutely, when you purchase the book in any format, whether you buy it on Kindle, whether you buy the audio book, go to FromImaginationToReality.com and put in the your receipt number. 
You'll see a little form, put in your receipt number, and you will receive a free From Imagination to Reality workbook. Wow. And I'm doing a free 30-day mini course wow. on, um, on YouTube. And if you want to take a deep dive, Hay House has a From Imagination to Reality course that I've done, a deep dive course that you can find at tinyurl.com slash abiola on TV. Yeah. tinyurl.com slash abiola on TV for folks who want to take everything to the next level. Well, wow. now listen, guys, so that you don't have to wonder if you got all that information down <laughs> in the comments it's going yeah. to be pinned all of her contact information will be pinned in the comments of this conversation and it'll also be in the conversational notes so don't worry about not having the i didn't get all that or i didn't write it down or how did you spell that or whatever we're going to have it pinned in the comments and we're going to also have it in the regular comments so everything she's going to submit that information to me so you guys will also have it but also listen She's got the book out there. You can get it in audio. You can get it in Kindle. You can get the physical book. So there's different, depending upon your modality of learning, she's got it out there. She's also supplying those who purchase the book with a workbook. And this 30-day challenge that she's also putting out there. Listen, that stuff in itself is a $1,000 workshop for many people. That's what they offer as a $1,000 workshop. She's offering to you as a gift for simply purchasing the book and going out and just acknowledging and showing your receipt of the purchase. And you get that stuff for free. Like I said, in many cases, people charge a great deal of money. Our goal ultimately is your transformation. Now, as you know, if you go out to my YouTube channel, I offer a lot of free. But there's also going to be those things that you have to make an investment in yourself. But like I said, the key to that investment, if you get with Abiola, the key to the investment with her is you shortcutting your manifestation journey. And so that the stuff, the heartaches and the challenges that she's faced, you don't have to. And I know that she's going to be a great resource. It's funny. She was talking about the benefit of giving back. And the reason why we're having this conversation is because she had put something in the Facebook group about her book. She did something that most people that promote their book in my Facebook group don't do, and so they don't get shown, is she asks. She says, listen, this may not be something that you want to promote, and that's okay. And simply by her asking, it opened my heart to at least put it out there. I said, I don't have anything to lose, but she put it out there. And then I reached out to her, and we started a conversation, and here we are today. And she's right. This is going to be the first of many. I look forward to speaking with and sharing and us maybe even partnering and doing something together. But guys, take advantage of this knowledge, this wisdom that she's poured into about the teachings of Abdullah. But understand, this is not just Abdullah's journey. It's not just Neville's journey. It's your journey. And if you want to grow on that journey, begin pouring into yourself. This is, I think, a less than a $20 investment if you got the book online. It's worth your transformation. Get the book. Give her a review. You know, reviews are the lifeblood for authors that people say, listen, I'm interested. So uh, as we're closing down, anything else for the listening audience? Oh, you just thank you so much. Like yeah. like I said, you just completely just it, it just for me like this, like I'll be I'll be energetically high all day <laughs> from this beautiful conversation and as you said you know that for me also this has been you know 20 plus year journey yeah. I've spent like you thousands and thousands of dollars in my Absolutely. own personal development Absolutely. education you know and so for people to be able to have a shortcut for those of us who create like yeah. for you as a creator with this show you know what we create we're creating the tools that we wish would have existed Absolutely at a point in time Absolutely. for ourselves, you know, yeah. we're creating that for others to have an easier time. Absolutely. So, you know, if you are, thank you so much for everyone who showed up for this conversation yeah. and who is here. And I am looking forward yeah. to more. Thank you, Costa Carla. It's been a pleasure. And like I said, her links will be in the uh, comments and the bio and so forth. So look for those uh, to re reach out to her. You won't regret it. It'll be a pleasure. And what you'll take away will be far more than whatever investment time or whatever you put into it. So reach out to her and learn from 
Abiola. The name itself means wealth, wisdom, prosperity. So it already tells you what you're stepping into. So those things, and it doesn't stop just that. We're not just talking money. We're talking lifestyle. We're talking relationships, every aspect of your life. So it's been a pleasure and we'll talk soon.